Welcome back to the Heartland Pod. My name is Adam Summer, and I am your host. This episode of the Heartland Pod is a special chat episode. Uh, Rachel Parker was able to take some time and connect with Representative Sarah Unsicker. This is uh, the representative's second time on the show. I had the pleasure to interview her uh, a few months back, and uh, she gave some time to Rachel to talk about Missouri uh, more in depth. Uh, if you haven't listened yet, uh, there was an episode a couple of days ago uh, where Lindsay Simmons came on and, and joined me, and we spent about an hour uh, breaking down the leaked Dobbs opinion uh, and and what its ramifications might mean for red states, and we talked quite a bit about Missouri, but uh, this chat takes that uh, and sort of zooms way down in on, on Missouri and really helps us understand these trigger laws. Uh, Lindsay and I talked about those some. It really expands upon those and takes us into kind of the the inner workings and, and some of the debate even surrounding some of this stuff. Uh, they, they're going to talk about IVF ramifications, which is something that I, I don't think people really appreciate that connection of IVF and abortion and how much those two things actually go together way more than people might imagine. They, you know, I think most folks think of IVF as something that helps people have babies, and that's true. Uh, but there, you know, there's a lot to it. Uh, and there's plenty of folks out there who have experienced it. I, I personally have two folks that I, you know, interact with on a fairly regular basis. Uh, some folks who have uh, have completed that, and some folks who have completed it and are trying it again. And uh, you know, it, it's a lot of effort. It's a ton of time. So, uh, very interesting connection that that gets lost. So, reminder: check us out on socials: Facebook, Instagram, The Heartland Pod, on Twitter at The Heartland Pod. You'll always find us there. But let's get to the chat with uh, Representative Unsicker and Rachel Parker. Let's have a chat. So sitting in front of me over a Zoom call while she's in the middle of juggling a million other things today because the uh, Missouri Assembly is in session right now is uh, St. Louis area Representative Sarah Unsicker back on the pod. Uh, how are you this? How are you this morning, Representative? Oh, things are things are busy. It's been a rough day so far, but... I bet week. it is. And um, yeah. we could probably do a whole series of podcasts just on um, the budget uh, negotiations alone. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll kind of see, we'll have to see where the dust settles because it's, that's an ongoing issue. But really what I wanted to talk to you about today, and thank you so much for making the time. Um, this really is, I just want to make it clear to everybody, this really is a, a pretty big sacrifice to ask a lawmaker to stop in the middle of what they're doing in a session like this and talk to a grassroots um, podcast. But what we really wanted to talk about today, mainly for the benefit of the of the listeners and the voters in Missouri, is the so-called trigger aspect of the abortion ban that was passed in Missouri. Was that two years ago? Three years ago. It was Three years ago. Yeah. Who can keep all the abortion bans in Missouri straight at this point? Um, that's. I wish that were a joke. You're laughing. That's very kind of you. So let's go back to that law three years ago and talk about the aspects of it where and where we stand with it and what we mean by trigger law. I think even that 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 language alone is a relatively new kind of term because we never have been this close to uh, Roe v. Wade being overturned on the federal level. So the trigger law is um, it's basically a law that says that what, if one thing happens, then this becomes law. So so we passed the law, but it doesn't take effect until something happens. The, we have an abortion trigger law that was passed in House Bill 126 a couple of years ago that says as soon as Roe versus Wade is overturned and the revisor of statutes gets an opinion by the attorney general or a proclamation by the governor, then, Roe, or then abortion is immediately illegal in Missouri. The law says that notwithstanding any other provision of law, so above any other provision of law, um, no abortion shall be perform performed or induced upon a woman except in cases of mer medical emergency. A person who performs or induces an abortion in violation of this section is guilty of a class B felony. So that's, that's our abortion trigger law. So this is a very broad law, and there's been a lot of concern, understandably, amongst, first of all, let's just say that that will definitely, absolutely, completely disqualify abortion as legal in Missouri, no question. 
Um, yeah. At this time, there's still only one, despite this law not being in effect, there's still only one abortion clinic in Missouri at this time, but it is still legal to perform an abortion. So if your healthcare provider, um, if you go to your OBGYN or something and you say, can you, you know, can, can do you perform medical abortions? They're legal. It's legal to do that. There's just one place in Missouri where literally anybody can walk in off the street and get access to abortion services. And that's the Planned Parenthood in Missouri. So this is, of course, this conversation is now happening in light of the fact that there were some troubling documents leaked uh, about a SCOTUS, a, a Supreme Court of the United States opinion that looks like they have the absolute, absolute intention to overturn Roe in relation to the uh, Mississippi abortion law that uh, it looks like it's going to be argued shortly. Um, have you? Has anybody in the House Democratic Caucus been in touch with any of the folks at Planned Parenthood or here in St. Louis? How, have those conversations happened yet? I have not had those conversations yet. Um, the, the opinion just came out what, a day and a half ago, and yesterday was pretty crazy on the floor, and today sure. has been crazy. Sure. Uh, let me let me ask you this. Speaking of the floor, did you do you have a sense yet that there are any of the kind of quote, quote unquote saner Republicans, such as they are, that there would be any support to kind of peel back some of the more draconian language in this trigger law if Roe is overturned? Do you think this was sort of a bluff in a lot of ways, meaning like a sort of a virtue signal to the more extremists in Missouri in terms of the voters? Or do you think like this is going to go forward? No Republican, either in the House or the Senate, is going to do any in the Missouri House, or the Missouri Senate is going to do anything to protect, say, the victim of sexual assault, uh, which includes I love it when they say rape or incest. You're like, well, incest is rape, you, whatever. So has there been any conversations about that that you've heard so far? I haven't heard any conversations about that. In addition, um, session ends, we have seven more days of session this year. Um, and after that, we don't go back into, into the legislature until January. We can't really introduce bills unless the governor calls a special session um, until January. And this opinion is expected to be released at the end of June. Um, so there will be at least six months when abortion is illegal would be illegal in missouri yeah. Completely. completely um yeah the governor could call a special session but i don't think he's gonna do that no i think i think that he will he will probably have a ticker tape parade with him as the grand marshal and um i mean i know he's somebody that you have to speak with and work with but he's never been anything but vociferous about the most extreme type of religious conservatism which includes of course um a so-called right to life position um, what, so there's been some speculation and I just, if you can comment on it, that, that would be helpful because the language of this trigger law is so broad, there is some concern that it could make certain procedures like, um, IVF treatment for expectant mothers illegal and potentially could also prevent the implantation of birth control devices. How do you interpret that? Um, there was a tweet that Peter Meredith, your colleague, uh, yeah. Another St. Louis area Democrat, my representative, sent out yesterday. Can you clarify um, those concerns or address them? Yeah, I think especially with IVF, that would definitely be problematic because um, abortion happens in IVF. You know, they intentionally terminate the life of an embryo, which is defined as abortion in Missouri. So that would be there would be that would be illegal as far as. IUDs, I don't know how that would be determined. Um, I could see it being illegal too. And of course, this completely takes off the table the so called morning after pill or medically induced abortions as well. So, I mean, again, like women are given, I hate the term the morning after pill, but I'm just going to keep using it because it's the um, kind of the more common uh, terminology that people are more familiar with. But women are given, I should say, like anyone with a womb. So we'll say biologically designated females, because of course, like in some terminology or some instances, non-gender conforming people can certainly get pregnant as can trans men in various stages of transition. So sexually assaulted persons with a womb are given a, a abortion inducing drugs to prevent implantation of pregnancy in the event of sexual assault. That would also be illegal under this law. Is that correct? I'm not sure um, because okay. that was before implementation implantation so um it doesn't it it prevents implantation so i'm not sure it would be defined as abortion so is there still some chance that for example could the could this medication then therefore be sought out by 
people if they are in that situation. So could so there's a, there's I think there's some concern that people will hoard medications in the event that they ever do have, you know, um, I mean, you know, people's birth control is not 100 um, percent. Right. So is so we're saying that that there are some situations where that that particular medication might be legal in Missouri or we just don't know how the law will be applied. We don't know how law, how the law will be in, applied. That's it so comforting. That it will be legal, but we don't know. That's so comforting. So let's talk for a second about, I think this doesn't get discussed a lot because we think about uh, abortion as a form of health care for women, but we don't really talk about uh, IVF enough as it applies to this particular law. So if you're trying to become a parent, um, mm -hmm. I don't know how many people in Missouri seek IVF treatment. Uh, that would be an interesting statistic. I'm sure somebody will tell us on Twitter. It certainly is it going to be an interesting conversation to have with the medical community, who I'm assuming will probably speak up on Moss after, if, if this actually takes place in June. We still don't know. We do have to point that out. We still don't know actually what the Supreme Court is going to say. Uh, we think we know, but we don't know for sure. But presumably probably thousands of women a year in Missouri, thousands of women trying to get pregnant. I should say people who are prospective parents are trying to conceive on their own, find out they can't. Um, and seek IVF as, as a treatment. And mm -hmm. has do you think there was an adequate conversation about that aspect of this particular piece of legislation when it was passed back in 2019 or whatever it was? I don't think so. I, I don't think it was really addressed for IVF. Um, when it was passed. So I think that's something that I would say to, to you know, both your constituents and anyone listening to this conversation is that they should probably find out, um, having start having this conversation amongst the people you know, because young women need to know that if you're not maybe thinking about, or I should say people that want to get pregnant uh, by choice, if they're not seeking that opportunity right now, infertility can affect people of all ages. I mean, I certainly know very, very, very young parents who had to seek IVF who were under the misnomer that infertility only affects people over a certain age. It can happen at any point in your life. You just don't know. Right. Um, so the medical community probably needs to, you know, presumably also get involved. So I'm, I would assume we'll probably hear more about this conversation. But let's go back to just say, let's just say survivors of sexual assault um, mm -hmm. in Missouri. Do you know currently how many survivors of sexual assault seek abortion services annually in missouri roughly i don't know okay I that's all right that um when this law passed i remember kind of the the flurry around at the activity i remember representative quaid standing um you know in front of a very large crowd in the capitol mm -hmm. what what do you think the energy was like i mean i again i remember because i was paying attention surely your phones i mean you you represent a fairly we'll say liberal or democratic part of, of St. Louis County, your phones surely were ringing off the hook with people saying like, how, what can we do to stop this? Surely this is going to get vetoed, so on and so forth. Has, has, have your phones been equally busy the last couple of days with people who are aware of the existence of this law? Or do you think people kind of put it in the back of their minds because so much other stuff has happened in the last couple of years? My phone has not been blowing up. Um, I think people tr trust me to do what I can to preserve abortion rights, but you know, yeah, people haven't been calling me a lot, but I think it would be good, even though people think that I'm on their side, to hear from people saying, right. you know, you need to do this. And you we should point to out, to too, that what happens, what's going to happen between the end of this session in June and the beginning of the January session is this little thing called an election. Mm -hmm. um, so there are, we always talk about vulnerable Democrats in Missouri because that's what our side constantly talks about. There are vulnerable Republicans too, right? Um, are there any, let me ask you this first to be fair, let's, because I would like to know, are there any of your colleagues on the Republican side right now who you think have been more reasonable? For example, were there any Republicans who have voted against the so-called trigger law when the ban was passed back in 2019 or was it unanimous? I believe it was an unanimous, but I'm not sure I'd have to go back and check on that. Which really says that if it weren't, it would have stuck out in your mind that it was like that it passed by a slim margin, but that it passed with a slim margin on the Republican side. So then I guess the answer is, as far as like colleagues in the on the Republican side of the caucus, 
there aren't any that are particularly less offended by this abomination of what I'll call an abomination of legislation. You don't have to call it that if you don't want to. I will. Do, can you think of any people on the on the Republican side right now who would be in support of something that's less draconian than this? I can't think of any. Um, it's it's all politics, really. It's all you know playing to their base and playing to the base fears of their um, of their base. You know the fear that. It's fetuses who are well developed, and um, you know the the image that it's a well developed fetus that's ready to be born, that's being um, torn asunder, for, and yeah, yeah, in their eighth yeah. month of pregnancy, and that's that's so rare. I mean, I don't think they can do it in the eighth month, and, but you know, I think not unless it's a stillborn. Right. And even then there are there are times where the the doctor says, "Look, we just have to wait this out. Like you're going to literally have a stillbirth and we're just going to have to let that happen." Um right. because performing the procedure will, will be such a great risk to you that we unfortunately it, this is what we have to do. Um yeah, I I've I've long ago stopped hoping that science would penetrate that belief system. Um you know, I think we see that with all those kind of the fears around the COVID-19 vaccine. It's a, there's a lot of crossover in that demographic. My hope is that uh, because this will be so undermining of um, just healthcare in general, uh, that hopefully we will see at least some reasonable people who do tend to vote more Republican or at least tend to be people that are persuadables favor, I'll say, pro-abortion candidates uh, in this next yeah. election cycle. Is there anything else that you'd like to talk about in terms of kind of where we sit right now? Are there any other, I mean, I know there have been some other just ridiculously absurd pieces of legislation that did not make it um, off the floor. I think there was one that would outlaw top, a treatment for ectopic pregnancy. I believe that was dead on the vine. Well, I'm just, it, it still would. It. I mean, it's, I don't know if it's going to go anywhere in light of the Supreme court um, draft opinion, but it still would um, make treatment of ectopic pregnancy a felony. It just doesn't mention it as an enhanced felony. So that's interesting. So I never thought about that. So currently the way that this language is written, it could potentially make it a crime to perform surgery on a woman if she has an ectopic pregnancy. I think this was for medicine. I don't, I think it was not, it didn't mention surgery in this bill. Okay. So it, would, it would make okay. it illegal to get medication to treat the abortion and the ectopic pregnancy. I'm just going to, sorry, I, I need to actually literally digest that for a moment because those are the, maybe some of the hardest words I've ever heard come out of a lawmaker's mouth in my life. Um, apologies for stumbling, but that's just an honest, uh, that's an honest reaction. Uh, my mother had an ectopic pregnancy. She would have died, um, et cetera. So, and now they're, the, medic the medications that they are able to provide um, someone who's suffering from an ectopic pregnancy, let's be clear, that's an illness. It's not, it's no longer a viable pregnancy. Those medications can prevent the necessity of the um, expectant parent going through tremendous suffering, like tremendous, oh. tremendous suffering, sepsis, ruptures, uh, surgery of any kind is invasive, and the in, in many cases, when you have an ectopic pregnancy, the fallopian tube uh, needs to be essentially uh, removed um, and tied off, uh, which then really challenges fertility later in life. So if a, an ectopic pregnancy is detected, medication can then save the viability of that tube and the follicles and, you know, the likelihood of pregnancy uh, later. So the idea that they're going to wait, that, that human beings would have to wait until they are surgery, surgery is medically necessary to save their life uh, is, to me, the definition of cruel and unusual. I, I don't we'll see what the courts have to say about it. Um, yeah, and that's the thing about the abortion bill is the abortion actually has to be um, the necessary it's necessary to have an immediate abortion to avert the death of a pregnant woman or for which a delay will create a serious risk of substantial and irreversible physical impairment of a major bodily function of the pregnant woman. So it's, it's really scary how the wording is because because that can be relative, right? Like it's yeah. often life, life threatening is often, I don't want to say it's subjective, 
but it it the doctor could argue look if i hadn't made this decision or advised my patient to immediately undergo surgery the condition could have become life threatening it wasn't in that moment but we bypassed the likelihood that it would become but it would become life threatening unless i'd performed that uh surgery immediately and let's be clear doctors will probably err on the side of not wanting to go to jail or court or lose their medical license or whatever so for, for those who are braver um it's going to be up to a court to decide whether the whether there was a serious risk of substantial bodily harm you know that's going to be up to a judge or a jury to decide not to medical professionals and i think too i remember uh, more than a a couple prosecutors in the state raising their hands and saying i don't want to prosecute doctors by the way like i really don't want to prosecute doctors this is not why i got into this work to protect victims not to create them um right. so this will put prosecutors in a terrible position because you're basically asking them to indict physicians for treating patients, um, mm -hmm. which is, I think, I think it's more untenable than than so-called pro-life people really realize that is. Um, and I, I, I've long ago stopped expecting the most virulent pro-life activist to ever be reasonable about anything when it comes to issues related to abortion and healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to keep you for too much longer because I know you, you, you have kind of another white knuckle day ahead of you. Um, as troubling about the Supreme Court decision that we all fear is coming down the pike in a couple of months. The other thing that I'm afraid of is that even in light of, let's say that this trigger law goes forward, abortion is illegal in Missouri on a temporary basis or permanent basis, depending on what happens in when you guys come back uh, in normal session in January. Do you sense that, and you know, far be it for me to overestimate how venal a lot of your Republican colleagues are. I mean, they just are at this point. I'm not all of them, but many of them. Do you mm -hmm. think they'll be like extra abortion, like ex let's make abortion like extra illegal bills that they would force you to kind of um, bounce around through the house so that those folks can further virtue signal? Um, or again, like, do you have, has that already happened? What other bills have been introduced this session that that are so ridiculous? Just to, because, like, how much further can you go? Oh, watch, we're going to go this much further. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, there seems to be a lot of... Can you mention just a couple of those that have already happened? Um, not really. I mean, I know there was a conversation about, like, we're going to make ectopic pregnancy, ectopic pregnancy treatment illegal. Mm -hmm. And that, that went away. Kayla Brown made yeah. it very clear that that wasn't going to see the light of day. So, you know, have there, has, there been any, has there been any symbolic legislation like you know, a, a resolution to recognize the life of a fetus as being real or something that doesn't have any teeth to it? Have there, have there been things like that? There is a resolution to put in our constitution that nothing pr protects the right to an abortion. Um, so it's symbolic, but there is a resolution that could come up that does that. But that is, but that's, that's a symbol with some teeth to it. Um, when you start saying the words constitution, um, so I'll ask you this last question, and then I'll just let you comment further if you if you want to say something else. My other question is: so we're we've seen in this session um, a lot of energy around uh, making it more difficult for the voters of Missouri to pass ballot amendments. Yeah. Um, so can you talk about where that is right now? Um, that is, it's moving. Um, I can't tell you exactly where it is right now. Did it make it out of the house? Yes, I think so. So it's over. So it's over in the Senate side. Okay, so that's so you you. I know that all the House members really tried to stop that one from going through, and right. um, and basically what it does is that would make it more difficult um, for voters to not just pass ballot amendments, but even get them on the ballot to begin with. They need more votes. And uh, do, have you been contacted by anybody on? kind of who kind of do that, that type of organizing i'll say about the likelihood of a pro-abortion or a, a bill that would legalize that would change the missouri constitution to legalize abortion in missouri have have those have you heard from any of those folks I haven't yet had any of those conversations so i don't know about anything okay planned um i would believe there probably sh should be something um to put that on the ballot but i don't know what the likelihood of that is. Okay. Anytime. Let's pretend like we didn't have that conversation. Like, no, that's not going to happen. No, voters would never vote in favor of 
legalizing abortion on their own without having to go through the state legislature. Let's just keep that as a little slant. Let's we we didn't bring it up. Um, right. So thank you so much for your time. I again I said I wanted to keep this brief um, because you have a major major fish to fry about the um, the budget. Do you want to kind of give us a sneak peek about any of the budget conversations that are happening today? Well, I'm on the budget for House Bill 11, and the good news about that, um, that's the social services budget, and the good news is it does fund Medicaid, including Medicaid expansion. So that's the really good news in the budget. Um, and do you, so do you think that it has a good chance of actually getting out of the House? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Well, that is good news. Um, yeah. And so why don't we leave it like this is a rare thing for me to do when I talk about Missouri <laughs> politics and Sierra. Let's leave it on a high note. OK. OK. So, uh, Representative Von Sicker, thank you so much for coming back on the pod. We always love having you and I'll let you get back yeah. to it. And thank all of your colleagues for us from our little family to yours. Thank you so much for the work you do. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. Bye. The Heartland Pod is a production of Midmap Media, LLC. Follow us on Twitter with at the Heartland Pod. With email, you can reach us, heartlandpod2020 at gmail.com. Online with heartlandpod.com. Subscribe and please sign up for our Patreon with patreon.com slash heartlandpod. Become a podhead or an official podgressive today and unlock all of our content. See you at the next show. <laughs>